it's Greg with Reality REI. Tip of the day coming to you from downtown Breckenridge in Colorado. And the uh, tip of the day are just a, a general guidelines on um, if you're creating a kitchen that's got an island, a couple of do's and don'ts or things that I like to do. If it's got, I always like to have pendant lights that are hanging down. And those pendant lights, I don't like to use the wire type. I, I like to use the ones that are the rods, the actual rods that look solid, just because they look they look a little bit more of a higher quality. Um, also for the overhang, make sure that you have some kind of overhang. Um, usually I think it's somewhere between 12 to 16 inches of overhang. And I like to have a slight curve on that, um, on that island. So it's not just like a, you know, a big block or a big uh, square thing. It's got a, what's called a semi, um, a moon curve. Um, it's usually about a three inch from, from the peak down to the edges. So it's just a slight curve. I don't do anything major with the granite as far as edges. I don't do anything special with the edges. Um, I typically just like a quarter quarter round um, or the standard, you know, the standard edge. Um, the edges just aren't worth it price wise because they get pretty expensive. Um, whether or not to have a sink where the island is, is uh, really depends on the view of the rest of your kitchen. Usually you like to have a sink that's overlooking um, the outside window, a window to the outside. But some people like to put a sink on the island. I'm not a big fan of it. Um, most of the time, you just want it to have have it to be hangout space, not a space where you're you're doing your cleaning. So, anyway, that's just some good uh, some tips for doing uh, when you're creating an island in a kitchen on uh, some of the setups on how it how it should go. So it's Greg with Reality REI Tip of the Day coming to you from Breckenridge. Make it a great day.